Hej och varmt välkomna till en av Stockholms filmfestivalen absoluta höjdpunkter. Eller vad tycker ni? Ja, ja. ja. snart kommer vi få se. Jag heter Gitt Tjejner och jag är festivalchef och snart kommer vi få se både en av mina absoluta favoritregissörer och också er tror jag. Vi kommer alltså presentera Gas Van Sand face to face här och... Eh, han kommer få The Visionary Award och jag kan nästan inte komma på någon regissör som är bättre lämpad för dessa med den mångfacetterade egenskaper som denna fantastiska regissör har och en av världens främsta. Vi visade hans eh, andra film här på festivalen, eh, My Own Private Idaho 1991 och sedan dess har vi följt hans fantastiska konstnärskap med stort intresse och det känns på något sätt som att vi har växt i takt med Gans Van Sands eh, konstnärskap och utvecklas med det och det har varit ett nöje att följa honom. Gans Van Sant är inte bara en fantastisk regissör utan han är också mentor för en lång rad begåvningar och är väldigt aktiv i vad ska jag säga, independent filmmaking och har verkligen hjälpt många unga begåvningar. För detta vill vi också hedra honom. Till hjälp i, i kväll har vi en moderator Stig Björkman som är filmjournalist och författare och regissör och har nästan lika många yrken som Gas Van Sand. Så vi kan väl värma upp våra händer med en varm applåd för Stig Björkman. Thank you. 
Um, with your background and, of course, also through your film work, uh, I think you are probably the most suited and well merited recipient. Re recipient of the Festival's Visionary Award. Do you have a background in design, in music? You are a painter, photographer, and you have written a novel, Pink. And of course, uh, uh, you are a most distinguished filmmaker. But um, how and when did film come to you? Um, thanks for that intro. Um, uh, well, I was, a, I was originally a painter. I, um, in junior high school, I had a very influential um, art teacher, and I was um, painting, and also I think uh, another teacher at the same time had uh, shown us a whole lot of films from the Canadian Film Board, which were generally experimental pieces that were um, distributed in schools. And we were only about 12 or, or 14, 12, 13 or 14 during this time. So <clears throat> they were kind of school oriented, but also very experimental pieces. And so I think as students, we were trying to make our own pieces in uh, mostly eight millimeter. And then because I was painting, as I got a little older, I got to be about 16. Um, I was working in New York City and I got to see the, the the New York uh, underground filmmakers work by going to the Museum of Modern Art or else the Anthology Film Archives. And then I was kind of emulating, <clears throat> or at least experimenting, sort of, sort of in the vein of like a Stan Brackage, who was a painter, so I thought painters could, could work in a certain way in film as well. Um, so that's how I started, basically. And uh, are these, uh, no, then you continued making experimental films like the ones being shown now at the Photographic Museum in Stockholm. You, you went on making... Oh, the, the, yeah, well, the ones, the ones that are at the museum... School, after design school. Yeah, the ones at the, at the museum uh, here are... Uh, there are three films. One, uh, two are videos, actually, for uh, William S. Burroughs, who, where I did the first one for him in 1990. And then later in 1996, I think, or 60, or uh, 97, I guess 96, before Allen Ginsberg died, I made a similar video. And then <clears throat> the third piece is the, uh, called The Discipline of D, which is from a William Burroughs short story. And that is um, sort of the first film I made out of college. It was uh, more like 1977. And it was fashioned after uh, his story. So they were, they were not films like that, that was more advanced, that was post-film school. And I went to film school, I went to an art school, Rhode Island School of Design in Providence, Rhode Island. And with the idea that I could, I could paint or also f uh, make films, and I realized that the film department sort of sucked me in. And we, uh, as a cohesive film department, were sort of working uh, around the clock all year because it was so difficult to sort of like, try to get anything decent going uh, on film. It just took so much time. So uh, the stuff that's playing here right now is, a is after all that sort of intensive study. And stuff. But then later on, in the mid-80s, when you lived in Portland, you made your first feature film. I, I guess you had other pro projects for feature films before that, but the first one uh, was Malanoche, uh, which came in 84. Um, you, I, I think this was a very personal venture for you. You produced it yourself also. Can you tell about how the film came along? Yeah, um, well, I originally, after making The Discipline of D, which uh, is, is about seven or, seven or so minutes, I, uh, and did pretty well. I would play film festivals. I played the New York Film Festival, which was a big deal for me. And uh, then I tried, to, I made a feature called Alice in Hollywood which um, hasn't really, it, uh, it was hard for me to actually get it in festivals. It didn't really work out um, as a film. Um, nobody, it was an odd running length. I sort of lost uh, confidence in it and I, I shortened it so it was about 45 minutes. So I had made a feature, kind of a failed feature film, and then I started over um, uh, saving money for the next one, which um, I eventually made a few years later. 
um, which was Malanoche. And that, that was, yeah, I, I, um, I basically, I was looking for money, but I basically paid for it myself, uh, just with summer job or not summer jobs, but indenturing myself over a couple years period and saving up the money, working in advertising in New York City. Um, and uh, yeah, Holly Hunter was here uh, earlier today and mentioned the Cohen brothers and Blood Simple, and I actually had, while I was raising the money for uh, Malanoche, my editor had worked with the Cohen brothers and <clears throat> they had successfully raised about a million dollars, so I remember talking to them on the phone, trying to figure out how one goes about <clears throat> raising money, and uh, I was never successful at raising a million dollars, so I spent my own like $20,000 on Malanoche. Uh, Malanoche, like many of your Films to Come uh, has been made in Portland, and which is your hometown since uh, quite many years back. Um, what does Portland mean to you um, personally and also when it comes to your film? Work? Um, yeah, my family moved to Portland <clears throat> when I was uh, finishing high school. I, I spent the last two years of high school in Portland and was very um, you know, in, uh, taken with the city, and I kept going back there during summer times, and eventually moved back for good to make Malanoche in uh, '84, I think it was 1984, and um, has have that particular film sort of got me <clears throat> established, got me my next film going uh, in Hollywood, and I, I sort of was operating from Portland. And I never, having, I had lived in Los Angeles for about six years prior to that. And I lived in the New York area for about three years. And so I kind of was very ready to, um, to forego uh, living in these two cities, at least as a permanent place to live, um, because I, I seemed to um, be getting something going without that, you know, without trying to play into the direct center of the business, so I remained in Portland. The next few stories were uh, Drugstore Cowboy and My Own Private Idaho were set in Portland. So I was making things that were basically set there and um, spent most of the time there.